Hello America and the rest of the world. I'm Denzel Washington. <laughs> We're here on the set of City Slickers 5, how Curly got her groove back. Uh, what's that? Oh, sorry. Hey, I'm Chris Pratt. We're on the set of Magnificent Seven. Hey, Marcus. The hardest story is the characters. They're very distinctively different. And they're a bunch of misfits that come together to do the right thing. These are all violent men, post-Civil War, and they're kind of weary of it. That goes back to the Sturgis film. They were just gunfighters without fights. And here comes something to fight for. And for the first time in a long time, it meant something. And I think that's what is appealing about these seven disparate men coming together. Hey, Marker. It started with Denzel. We had the list of actors to play that lead role. I said, what about Denzel Washington? And the room just went, quiet and then it was like an eruption of oh that'd be amazing you think he would do it oh my god could you get him to do it character's name is sam chisholm as he says a duly sworn warrant officer from wichita kansas a bounty hunter if you will he's a black man in the frontier in a position of authority so he needs to let people know that he has authority from the government to do his job when chisholm meets emma he can see that she's very desperate but I don't think that that's why he helps her. I don't think that Chisholm is a charitable man. Men slaughtered in cold blood, all because some man named Bo wants to mine our valley and take it from us. Bartholomew Bo. You know? In our story, he's looking for revenge for something that happened to his family. We connected somehow. 14th of October, 1867. Because he wasn't able to serve justice, he's been attracted to that the desire to bring evil people to pay for their crimes. The recruitment of each guy is probably the most fun of the film, for me. The very first person he recruits is Josh Faraday. When we start talking about the Steve McQueen role, you go, oh man, who's cool? Who has the charm? Who's a movie star? Everything is cool about Chris, man. I said, I don't know if he'll do it or not, because he has a lot of offers. I got him the script, he called me. He starts singing Old Shandora. <laughs> he was like, I love Westerns, man. I'm in. <laughs> We're here in Louisiana, which is a great place to shoot movies. Chris Pratt is one of the biggest stars in the world right now. We knew that we were going to be telling a tragic tale, but we want to give the audiences occasionally a respite from that drama. Chris just knows how to deliver that perfectly. I do believe that bear is wearing people's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what I talked to Antoine about when I first met him, I knew that I would have license to breathe some of my own spirit into the character, and that was, to me, very, very appealing. Faraday has a little bullet hole here because he's been shot, which is pretty cool. He's kind of like Rambo. It doesn't hurt him. It's just one of the many similarities to Faraday and John Rambo. I have a red bandana in my trailer that I put on during lunch and stuff. It's pretty cool. People don't look me in the eyes, and if they do address me, they call me John Rambo. It's been a lot of fun. Faraday's a bit of a fox. He's a trickster. He's lighthearted. He's a gambler, a drinker. He loves the ladies, but he's deadly in a firefight. He keeps his head cool, even in the most dangerous situations. He's in it for the booze and the women to begin with, but it turns into something else for him. When you read the name Goodnight Robichaud, it screamed to us Ethan Hawke. I'm always looking for something to do with Ethan. He had read I was going to do it. And literally, he cornered me and grabbed me by my jacket. He goes, if you do this effing movie, I'm doing it with you. I don't care what role I'm playing, I'm in. And I was like, all right, I'll call your agent. Hey, Marker. And one of the fun things about getting to play my character is he's not a hero. You know, he's suffering from his demons. He doesn't like himself, probably hasn't gone home after the Civil War. He's just kind of wandered out west. And everybody thinks he's this great guy. He wants to be that person, but he can't follow through with it. If I drop it, it's going to be a beat while I think about it. And then I'll turn around and take him in. I know he's breathing over my shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Ethan helped build that character a lot with the writer. If you really look at the Civil War, it's some of the worst PTSD. I mean, they wouldn't call it that. But it's real trauma, treating life cheaply. It made a lot of people nuts. My character is supposedly this great shot, is a great sniper and stuff like that. People who experience that often struggle with the repercussions. This made the part really fun to play. Goodnight Robichaud is haunted by his past. Um, he's trying to stay ahead of it. That's why when we meet him, he's not the violent one. Billy Rocks is. BH, I was a fan of his when he did a film called A Bittersweet Life. He walked to my office in Baton Rouge and I didn't realize it was the same guy. And he sat down with me, we kept talking, we were talking, I was like, which films did you do? And he told me the movie, and I was like, oh my God, man, I'm a huge fan. I'm playing Billy Rocks, and um, we seven has their own specialties and their own weapons, and I'm good at knives. I cut his leg. Yeah, from moral artery. And stick his, yeah. stick my knife yeah. on his neck. We have to really understand how to throw them and how to move with a knife. He knew how to do that. 
So I thought, okay, I can really play with his skill. I grew up with Western movies, and this script, when I first read it, this is fantastic. This is Manuel. Manuel's a professional gunslinger. Billy's there now. And then we meet wait. Jack Horn. And Vince created this whole larger-than-life mountain man character. He's just knocking guys out, taking your gun and shooting you like a bear coming at you. Just like, you can shoot him, but he's gonna just keep coming. You know what I mean? I live in the mountains and I've just been robbed and I'm a little upset during my entrance. These two ungodly creatures robbed me of my possession. Vincent came up with his voice, which I thought was brilliant because he didn't, he lived in the mountains by himself, so he actually forgot how he sounded. Hey, Chris. Oh, there he is over there. Yeah. Uh, I, I see you. The idea of doing the Magnificent Seven is like, if you're an actor, I don't know how you can turn that down. <laughs> These guys, they're just incredible actors, you know, legends. And then be a part of it, it's a huge honor for me, for my tribe, for all Native people. It's big. Such a cool character. There were so many things I identified with. He's kind of a loner. He's Comanche, but he's not with his tribe. I'm in LA. My tribe's in Alaska. We did a lot of research with our Native American consultant to make sure it was correct as far as his look and what, what the paintings meant. The director and producers have been incredibly sensitive to the culture. We wanted to portray the West in that time period with a melting pot because it was a melting pot. It's the way the world is today. You know, I wanted to make sure it was a film that reflect our world today. I mean, I wouldn't want to be part of a Magnificent Seven in this day, in 2015, with seven white guys. When I look at these guys who are playing these characters, I try to think about what their experience was as a Asian man or a black man in the Old West or in India, you know, and what my people were going through at that time. It brings a lot to the character. I feel that, and I'm sure they do too. HB. Hey, Marker. Hey, what makes the Magnificent Seven formidable is that each has a special quality that complements the other. So where one fails, another succeeds. None of these guys are here for ethical reasons. It's how you accidentally find yourself doing the right thing. This is a story about seven people finding themselves in a cause. No matter how rough they are, how bad they were in their other lives, gambling, women, gunslinging, they all come together for one common purpose, which is to help this town. And that's what glues them all together. That's the movie seeing these guys together. Come on out, everybody. Don't be afraid. These men are here to help us. You want to keep your town, you're going to have to fight for it. Behold, our uh, army approaches. Oh, good. They brought their pitchforks. We may stand a chance after all. <laughs> OK, cut. Guys, it's a 